Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I am Fiona Blaney, and I'm super excited, as always, to be here with you talking about one of my favorite subjects, and no doubt yours, although at times favorite, is that the right word? I don't know, puzzling, confusing, overwhelming, but certainly always absolutely important and crucial to your business and professional success is your online presence. Today, we're gonna to be working through a multitude of information and educational points to help you really understand and unpack who you are online, who you wanna be online, and how we help you bring those two things together. On behalf of realestate.com.au, I'd like to thank you for joining us and make sure you've got your pens, pencils, keyboards, or iPads at the ready so that we can make sure that you're getting all of these juicy tips written down and right into your to-do list. There is going to be a heap of information that we cover off and no doubt you'll have questions at the end. So make sure that you keep a note of my email address, fiona at realplus.com.au. So anything we haven't covered in today's session that you'd like to ask, I'll be able to answer those tips for you after our session. Don't worry though, I'll rephrase that email once we get there. All right, so technology at the ready, let's get stuck in. So when it comes to your online presence, firstly, I wanna take us on a little trip down memory lane. Now, when we think back to that first time you got in real estate, now for some of you, that might be last week or last year, but for others, you've been around maybe a few more years, not like myself. In 1992, I first started in real estate. And I can remember a number of years later as I was doing my licensing course, my diploma in, in property and business that some of you may have had to do where we did it in three years, not three days. But what happened was in this course, we had a, an enormous project to do at the end of the course. It was our final work. If you could think about it like a TAFE thesis almost. And what we did was we had to go through and do research, like complete research unpacking on a, a market area that we were familiar with. We needed to research the businesses, understand the fundamentals of them, look at their market presence, market shares, you know, all of the, the underpinning elements of their organization that we could find from the perspective of a consumer. And what was really interesting to me in this process was back in 19, what would have been then like 1995, um, back in those days, the window of an office was literally the window into that business. And when we think about those windows, they were very, very different to what they look like today, but we'll get to that. And what I, I struggled with understanding was, and, and I suppose really um, thought long and hard and, and researched into, was what was the perspective of that business that we gleaned from this physical window display? And what struck me on this research was one particular office that I was looking at, it literally had the largest physical window, window display in that particular marketplace but they were really smart about how they used it. Because if you wanna write this one down, perspective is reality. So the perspective of the consumer, being me standing in those consumers' footsteps at that time, was that as I looked across their window, just from a big macro viewpoint, they appeared to me to be the biggest, therefore, 1995 speak, the best in their area, because they appeared to me to have the greatest market because of all the windows to the properties, windows to the sales that they had available, the rentals that they had available in that marketplace at that time by having loads of cards, you know, card window displays, photos, etc. Now, if I looked at that window, I then started looking and I realized all was not as it seemed because in that window display, they didn't have one property per card. They had multiple cards per property. So perhaps they may have had 10 properties, but they had 50 cards. You know, it's really interesting around these windows into the world that was a real estate business back in 1995. We had basically, we had print style uh, windows, print style pathways into an office, be that in print media, in that printed window display cards, in letterbox drops, in signboards. It was a physical arrangement of the windows that took us into that organization. 
You know, when we look at those windows to the business, the windows to the business of 1995 are very, very different to the windows of today. You know, when you think about the physicality just of a window into your organisation, well, as we know, many businesses now, they don't even have a property in a window. It literally is a glass pane that is operating as a, almost a security device, if you like, between a consumer and the organisation itself. And that glass allows us just to see the physicality of the office as a window into what is happening, what the, the, the energy, the ethos, the culture, you know, the personality of that business. But what other windows then? How then in 1995 did we have this print style viewpoint of an organisation? And now today, well, the window viewpoint pretty much is obsolete. I tell you what happened. What happened was we got introduced to a different style of window. And when we think about a window, the window into your business, I want you to think of these windows as pathways into understanding who you are, what you do, why I should work with you. And when we think about these windows, they are all tech-based windows. You know, as I mentioned, if we have the, an organisational physicality of a window, in some organisations, I cannot even see in your window because you're not at street level. You're up high, a few storeys above in a commercial corporate style space. But does that mean I still can't see into your window? No. I'm using technology. I'm using all various forms of devices, iPads, iPhones, uh, computers, laptops, desktops. You know, I'm even asking um, Siri about you. I'm asking Alexa about you. I'm finding other ways, other vantage points to find out about you in a digital space. So never has it been so important for you to look at your online presence and not just look at it, understand it, and influence it. Write this down. How can I influence our online presence? And underline that word influence for you. Why? Why do we need to understand how to influence it instead of control? Well, there are ways that you can control some aspects of your online presence, but others you will simply need to influence by what you put out there for the algorithms of our online world to then dictate what is pushed out to a consumer based on what window they're using to get to you. So language is key as you can start to hear and if you've seen me speak before, you'll know that's absolutely important. So when we look at that influence piece, I want you to understand how much time your consumers are looking into this online window. Now you'll see here that in Australia, the average human spends at least five hours a day online. Now, when you think about that, that's 20% almost of our day. When we look at that in terms of how, if you sleep eight hours a day, how long we're actually awake for, there's only 16 hours. You go to bed, you get eight hours sleep. There's 16 hours that you're awake. You know, take five off that. There's 11 hours that you're actually not spending of your awake time online. If we go then globally, it's over six hours that a human spends online. So again, online is key. If you don't know that already, we've got to look at then with that five hours that somebody is spending online, when they're in the property space, we've got to make sure that what we're communicating to them is a true reflection of who we are and giving them reasons to open that window and start talking to us. Online means that in that five hours, people are in front of their computers, but also when it comes to their entire research process around how they're going to find whatever it is that they're looking for, be that a dress that they need, shoes, a holiday, a car, and of course that all important piece is their property manager. They're spending their time with their significant other sitting around a device, doing research on whatever it is, including you, before they even walk through the door. Think about the last significant purchase you made. I wonder how much time you spent online and how committed you were to that purchase before you even contacted the end retailer or service provider that you then purchased from. I bet it was more than five hours in one day. So guys, 
It's now no longer the World Wide Web. For us, I want you to think of that language being key, write this down, is it's the World Wide Window. This is the World Wide Window to you and your business. Now, I don't have to stand here and tell you that there are hundreds of windows online that are going to make their way in some format to you. You know, even thinking about like a local business directory, maybe the sports club that you're sponsoring, the children's school that you're involved in. You know, there are hundreds of windows and I'm not going to sit here today and tell you that we need to look at every single one of those windows because how can you control hundreds of windows? No, what I wanna spend our time on is delving down with you on those four main windows, the four main windows that I believe are crucial to understanding the most valuable time that you can spend influencing your online presence. So what are these four windows? Let's get stuck into them. Number one, well, search engines. Now, you can ask a question of a five-year-old or a five-year-old, certainly in my house, can ask a question of me. And as we start to talk it through, they've got a verb that they're using now to answer any question that they've got. And that is, oh, let's Google it, mum. So when it comes to every buying decision, pretty much, you think about where do you go and how do you search for the answer that you're looking for? If you're looking for a restaurant to go to, if you're looking for a holiday, if you're looking for a property management business, what would you do as a consumer? And stepping into that consumer's shoes, I'd suggest that one of the four places you're going to go is Google. Now, of course, there's other search engines, but this is our primary search engine in Australia. So your website needs to be thinking about its SEO search. Homework for you right now. Google not just your business, but I want you to Google the phrases, the search engine phrases that someone would put into Google if they were looking for an agency or a service provider in your location. Let's think about it. You know, if I was on the, the northern beaches of Sydney and I wanted to find a, a real estate agency, a property management company there, be that for, for as a tenant or as a landlord, what would I search? I may not search your name because I might not know your name. I'm new to the area or I'm just wanting to get a wider berth on what's happening. Well, look, you can see here, searching real estate northern beaches, being I'm in Sydney, so it's coming up with a Sydney centric uh, northern beaches location. And straight away up comes upstate as the first non-advertised location. Now it's really interesting. I wonder who comes up first for you? Have you ever thought about what that means? Do you monitor that traffic? This is the window to finding you and your business. Now, we can also look at other algorithms that they find, because when I go through and I'm looking at the search engine uh, optimization, and look, there's other providers that are gonna be able to help you with that. You know, you, well, maybe you could Google it. <laughs> How do I optimize my search engine optimization and who can I go through as a consultant? And there's myriads and you can always email me and I'll help you. But when we look at it and we go in and we, we do that search engine, right? And we, maybe we're looking for a particular agency or we're looking for that location. Here's what starts to pop up. You can see there the details of agencies in that area. And here we've got Upstate. And I've literally used in this search engine, I've discovered Upstate, but I wanna know more about them. So I've Googled Upstate and up has come the Upstate listing for that business. But guess what else has popped up? You'll see there the reviews. Peer reviews and peer expertise. You know, we're looking for our peers to tell us who we should use. We're being referencing to people that we've never even met before. So my next question to you is, what are you doing about reviews? Remember at the beginning I said, perception is reality. So if you've got minor reviews versus major numbers of reviews, forget what the reviews say for a moment, but what does that tell a client about your prospective client? When we're looking at those reviews, sure, you can have a review that's one star or a review that's five star. I know some of you were asking in your Q&A uh, that you sent through was around what do we do if we get a one star rating and what they've said, and I'm gonna bring you to that in a minute. 
but looking at how you can promote reviews. Here's a real quick, easy way to help you get Google reviews. Ask for them, make it easy. I've got a template that I use for our clients and we just send it through and it has a quick link, literally a link to place a Google review for us. So they can literally just click the link and bang, in they go. They're straight into their Google account provided they have one. And then all of a sudden they're able to write a review. Make giving reviews easier. One of the other interesting things in terms of reviews, and these are just a few examples that you can check out, check out your local competitors, check out your local area, check out yourself and see what review status is there. This is not new guys, but it's absolutely fundamental because the algorithms also will help increase your online presence. One of the things I found interesting in doing this research for you is if you look here at this example with Jealous Craig, where you've got on the, the right hand side there of your screen, where you've got the, the um, allocation there of the advert for, or the, the directory listing, should I say, for Jealous Craig. If you scroll down on that section, you'll also note there that you've got a web review, right? So here there, I've just highlighted it for you there so you can see, but look how many reviews are actually on the web for this organization. So it's not just collating the Google reviews now, it's also collating the reviews that Google can see that are coming from other directories or other review sources, and it's collating them all through into this one uh, directory listing. This is a super powerful way to hear from our, um, our peers, consumer peers, on what it's like to do business with you. Now you did ask, what happens if it all goes wrong and somebody writes a, a, a not a good review? It was really interesting on my way here um, this morning, I was uh, caught an Uber and the gentleman was telling me that he's done over 6,000 Uber rides and this week he got a two star rating. And the reason he shared that with me is because I, as I got in his car, I was like, wow, your car smells beautiful. And he said, thank you. Yesterday I got a two star rating and somebody said that my car smelt terrible. <laughs> and I thought, isn't that really interesting, right? It's the perspective. And that two star rating is then going to affect his review. However, if you're in a Google review situation and somebody puts a negative rating, you've got the ability to reply. And that response is absolutely crucial because it tells the end consumer that's checking your reviews, it's actually telling them more about you by how you respond to that negative review than what it did by you getting positive ones. I think this is one, and I've protected the, the agency here in terms of the negative review part, but look at that beautifully constructed response to a tenant who's made a negative review based on a, a tribunal situation. To me, that is so powerful. And as a landlord, I tell you what, this negative review would actually draw me into that agency as it'd be an attraction review as opposed to a detraction review because of how they've dealt with it smart review responses are crucial to your online presence. All right, let's go to number two, social media. Oh my gosh, is there another social media app that I need? Oh, look, needs, must, wants, n desires. N oh, look, there's just too many to start. What I wanna do though, is just take you through to the three that I think are at the top of the chain, as well as not just my point of view, but the number of users and where the demographics of most of your landlords are sitting in, in terms of their usage. Of course they are, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I'm gonna run through some tips here for you as to uh, what it is that you wanna be looking for to make sure that you're really owning each of these social spaces and getting the appropriate comments out to them. Okay, now of course, this webinar, by the way, will be uploaded into the, um, into the Agent Center after today. So if you don't get time to write everything down, make sure you go back in and take another look and of course, share it with your peers. So when we're looking at this, you know, think about your Facebook page. You know, when I log on there, number one, it's gotta be a business page if it's about your business, not a personal page, that a business is impersonating a person. It's not a person, it's a business. So it needs to be a business page. And when I get there, what's that hero shot tell me about? you. This quality hero shot title opening frame images. Your profile shot. What's the profile shot of? 
Who is it? Is it your logo? Is it another hero shot? Is it quality? Is it blurred? Is it ratioed correctly? You know, all of these images are absolutely crucial. You'll see images featuring through our entire list here, right? Why? Because people look at images, they're dissecting your images, they're analyzing your images. None of this grainy stuff is going to be of value because why? What do I think you're going to do with my property when you put it on your website if you cannot even get your social images right? The content within your Facebook page, yeah, it needs to be telling stories, draw me in, engage me in the process, not just beating the drum of here's my latest listing. I'm not interested in what your latest listing is unless you're telling me the story about it. Why? Because social media is social. Facebook is social. Thinking about the selfies, original quotes, and looking at viral uh, videos that are going through. Video content is great. It has a far higher engagement rating than any other form of communication on Facebook. So what is it that you're engaging the content in? Random thoughts, authenticity, bring your business to life as if it was a person, but it's a business Bring the personality of the business forward in what you're communicating through your Facebook page. Let me know you and love you, engage with you in that medium. Most of all, you know, you're demonstrating uh, your expertise and your authenticity and you're doing it by being consistent. Facebook's a great platform as well for some of the review parts, which we'll talk about in a minute. Number two, Instagram. Now, when we look at Instagram, this has a different meaning, okay? It's a little more creative than your Facebook space. Um, so you've got to be a, a, a lot, uh, think a little bit more outside the box with what you're posting. Yes, you're telling stories, but you've got a storyline that you can follow. Engage and collaborate with other people by tagging and, and noting and adding other people into your uh, Instagram stories and your Instagram posts and your images so that people can then interact and feel your business come to life. You know, you need to go live, not just in Facebook, but in Instagram as well. You can use a whole myriad of the tools within it, like boomeranging that people do, but it's just to, to, I'm not saying boomerang, by the way, is all of a sudden going to revolutionize your business. But these are tools and means by which that you can get um, engagement from that Instagram audience. There's another um, great element of Instagram, which many people don't realize, is around the volume of people that actually purchase through Instagram. Now, I'm not talking about purchasing property per se, but just purchasing as a consumer. Um, and when we look at that, there's a high value piece around this exclusivity. You know, exclusivity of, you know, maybe you're listing your rental properties there, you know, two hours before they're going live on the rest of your sites. You know, it's just around bringing people through in order to feel or, or that you're giving them blog feed or information feed or behind the scenes in your office before it gets anywhere else. Only marginally though, because you still need those other windows. Number three is LinkedIn. Now we start to get a little more professional on LinkedIn. It's not as creative and as colorful as, as Facebook and as Instagram. And here you're starting to create that company page, remembering that part of that company page is also from a HR perspective. It's from a really truly educational perspective. When you're looking at LinkedIn, uh, like Insta and, and Facebook, we still want really good quality photos on your heroes and your, and your, um, your profile shots there as well. You want to um, join and create uh, groups and conversations going, say around uh, uh, investing in your local area. You might have a group that's running there and you can start to collaborate with other people. Cross sharing interesting articles and information that again, demonstrates the breadth and, and depth of your knowledge and passion for your location and your, your services that you're providing and that investment industry overall. And you're gaining followers. You want people to be watching your content and interacting with you and making sure that you're actually interacting with them, right? It's that whole rule of um, you know reciprocity still applies in an online social space across all of the mediums as well, okay? Uh, we, now we're just talking here about your business pages today and of of course, then you have your own personal professional pages too that need to link back in. With LinkedIn, you want to make sure that everybody in your organization from a LinkedIn point of view is linked back into your organization again, so it shows the breadth and depth of your business and the quality and, and, and depth of knowledge and experience that you have within the people that work with you. So Insta, Facebook and LinkedIn all have their own individual stories, but 
Now, the commonality is around quality, consistency, engagement, creativity, and professional mixed in either circles. But overall, it's about peer recognition. It's about looking at what do other people think of you and how are they going to interact with your organization and how are they going to interact to know that you are the business they want to be dealing with in and amongst all the other windows that they're looking through to other businesses in your area. While they're sitting down at home in front of the couch, sorry, in front of the television on the couch and they're searching, researching who they're even going to talk to to start with. Number three is your website. So think about it like this. I've Googled, I've done my searching, window one. I've looked at some of those reviews. I've then started to see who other people I know are looking at. I've gone through my social space. I've jumped on Facebook. I've searched your business now in your Facebook feeds, in my Facebook feed. I've now searched you on Instagram. I've checked you out on LinkedIn. I'm starting to make a decision and shortlist who I'm then going to go into the next window. So the closer window to you, I'm going to start to look at your website. Now, when I look at your website, I'm starting to feel, I don't know, not so great about you anymore. Maybe your website is the last thing that you're looking at. Guys, I have spent the last couple of weeks looking at so many real estate websites in preparation for today because I wanted to make sure that you know what I was coming to you with around these um, points of improvement and points of consideration were valid and I've got to say there was a few shocks <laughs> um, there was a few shocks and there's a few shocks for me in these last two points right uh, window three and window four because when we look at this website the website it, website now is like I'm standing at your office in 1995 and I'm looking at that window display and I'm deciding who you are before I open the door. That's what your website is. Your website is then the final door into you. Now, what am I thinking when I look at that? Well, as a consumer, when I go online, there are about five, uh, sorry, 10 elements, right, that I'm looking at. And these are, um, I've gone through and I've done lots of research and I've read all the different articles and all the experts on website building. Uh, and I've looked at independence and French, all the franchise groups and, and the networks. And I'm looking at what's the consistency across them. What are all the must haves there? And I've, I've come up with these, with these 10. Um, the first one there is the engaging homepage. So when I jump onto your homepage, what do I see? You know, what's the imagery that I'm using or you're using, uh, you know, where we, and there's a whole range of other things around there. But how do I feel when I first get there? Now, please remember that not every consumer is for every office. So this is about understanding your market and how do you want your market to feel when they get to that website window? Is the website itself customer centric? Now, write this one down. Tell me or answer the questions. Tell me what I want to know, not what you want to tell me. You know, this website, it's not, uh, and of course you're going to put information about your business, but it's not the, the ego drum. It's what does the consumer want to know about me in order to make a decision about whether or not they want to now step through the door? What do they need to know? So is it a customer centric, customer experience driven site? Is there clear navigation? When I look at that homepage, do I know exactly where to go? Can I find the information about you or is it squirreled down in the deep, dark caverns of your site? Is there social proof on there? Because by the way, I've just been on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn potentially looking at the social proof around you. Is your website doing that for me? Do I have links in to all of those social backlinks? Can I find information to contact you? This one is quite often buried so deep within, I almost think you don't want me to call. The content itself is a quality, you know, even down to the bios that are written for your team members. You know, what does it tell me about them? Does it evoke emotion? Are they well written? Are they grammatically correct? <laughs> 
Um, what about lead capture? I'm on your site. Have you got somewhere that I can leave my details for an engaging reason why to interact with you so that we can communicate? Because after all, I've come there because I want to know more about you. Do you tell me about not just who you are, but do you tell me about what you do, why you do it and why I should want to do it with you? And finally, does your website contain call to actions? Now, whether you have built your own website from scratch or you have got access to the powerhouse that are the websites of designed uh, franchise websites, you still have the capacity and the capability to create the personality of your business through what you put up in the relevant areas. So you know what I want to do? I just don't want to talk to a 10 points of what you should do. I want to show you one of my favorite sites at the moment. So this site is a business that I referred to earlier called Upstate. When you jump onto their homepage, it's quality. This is a quality shop front. Um, I feel engaged and you can scroll through the front page of their site. Um, this is their store, right? Now, now when I say store, they're not, we're not going on there and buying a new jumper. You know, we're going on there and we're making a buying decision to buy into that business. Do I want to buy into that business? through the front of that retail store. Are you enticing me to click on something else and look a bit further? When we look at, um, at the, the uh, outlines, have you got simple navigation? Now, what I mean by simple navigation is I understand that many of the constructs of, um, of the different groups with their websites, you know, you have the ability, when I say simple, when I click on a button that says about us, I wanna make sure when I get there, it's actually about you and you're utilizing all of that information that you have available, the space, that all important commercial space to speak with clients and talk to them about who you are because about us should be about us. And I know you might think, oh, okay, Fee, well, that makes sense. Well, when you go and do the research that I've done in the last couple of weeks, you'll note that not everybody is doing that. You know, when the navigation, I go to my drop downs, you know, is there consistency there? If you've got the, the capacity and you're building your own site out or you've got the capacity to add pages, make sure that they're simplistic and they're, they're smart and they're consistent and they're clear and they make sense to the consumer. You know, it's like when I get to a website, I shouldn't need a lesson on how to use it. Social proof. You know, you've either got links back to your social pages or in your content, if you don't have link backs to social pages, why not in your content bring to life your social proof through what you put into your pages? So Upstate, I think, have done this beautifully. And you can see the colloquial nature of the language that they use. You know, I mentioned customer focus. What does a customer want to know about this agency? What's important for them to hear in their buying decision? When it comes to the, the content there as well, you know, we're, I love this, you know, serious street cred. If you knew this business, it, it's just who they are. And again, it's data, but the way it's collated and the way it's derived, it's not ego driven. It's data that is simplistic and it's customer centric in that this is what the customer would want to know. And of course, you know, if you're a property management business or you're a sales business with a property management business, you've got the ability there to also showcase all the other things that you do too. Because by the way, the customer might not know that. They've come through one window, a selling window, or they've come through a property management window through SEO and search engine, what they're looking for. And now show us everything that you do. You know, I see in our business, people might come to Real Plus website because they're coming there to find out about me speaking. But when they're there, they say, whoa, hang on a minute. We've got the community, we've got outsourced, we've got um, content and products and other things that they can look at. And so when they're there, we showcase that to them. Are you showcasing to your consumer everything that you can do? Interesting. Multiple lead gen areas. Where can you get data? Are you asking people to contact you all the time through this uh, multiple lead capture locations and they might just be simple clicks you know email me at if you don't have a lead capture section in where you exactly want it you can always put hey you know call to action and for them to email you click my email address or here's my email address to get in contact phone numbers text etc 
quality content. So when I'm on your site, what education are you giving me? I want to know that I'm going to deal with the expert in this area. So not only do I want you to have all the pizzazz and the energy and the ability to provide me with the services that I want, but show me that you are the expert. Don't tell me you're funny, make me laugh. Don't tell me you're the best, show me. Don't tell me you're the expert, allow me to read it for myself and feel it for myself. Content is key. Um, personality is again so important in the languaging that you use. You know, decide who you are personality wise as a business and make sure that all the languaging of your site, even as simplistically as the written word, or the style of photography that you use, the profile shots that you use, make sure that they live up to the personality of your business. I need consistency. I need it to look um, that it is uh, one family, one business, one brand, one message, one experience, one culture. And from that, I will feel con more connected that you will be consistent in the management of my properties, in the leasing of my properties. And I love one of the ways, the little quirky things that you can do if you're a quirky business. You know, this is super cool. Upstate have even got on there, you know, you can see the languaging, you can get the vibe of who they are. They show what they're listening to on Spotify. <laughs> you know, so it's about just doing things um, consistently and making sure that you've got that, that quality comms through there. All right, number four. <sighs> We know that realestate.com.au is the biggest window in terms of consumers around property search in Australia. We know that. And I've got to tell you, like I've spent a lot of time with these guys, but when it came to unpacking the online presence and the size of the window that you have available to your business, that pathway to your business through realestate.com.au. The last few weeks, even my thoughts were supercharged and I know them really, really well. Here's some stats for you that I discovered. The first thing I discovered is that realestate.com.au is a magic window. <laughs> you know, the magic window, if you think about that from when you're at school or uh, sorry, when you're a child or when you've been sitting there with your kids watching play school of all things, there's a magic window. And I really want you to think about this uh, portal as being the best magic window that you have. It literally is, and they're doing a whole advertising campaign around this right now, is it literally is Australia's biggest property address. You want some stats? You know, I love stats, right? So here's some stats. The numbers will tell you everything. Realestate.com.au has a three times higher visitation to than its closest competitors, right? So consumers visit realestate.com.au three times more than its closest competitor. That's a huge, huge stat, especially when I show you what some of those visits look like. Right, first number. Do you think 966,000 is a big number? I do. But 966,000 potential landlords and vendors are visiting realestate.com.au every month. Okay, that's the, the windows, the eyes on the windows into your business. 10 million visits per month are happening on realestate.com.au. Okay, it's a big, big numbers. I'd love there to be 10 million visits on my website. 42% <laughs> of landlords search online for a rental agency. 42%. So that's the stat that backs up what I was talking to you about right at the very beginning. You know, five hours, over five hours a day, 42% of them looking online when it comes to searching for a rental agency. 38% of landlords search similar rental listings to theirs when they're making these decisions, right? 38%, these are key. 21% of landlords search for the best quality listings on realestate.com.au. So not only are they looking at you, they're looking at what you do. Write that down. Not only are they, landlords are looking at you, they're looking at what you do. Remember, 
Don't tell me you're funny, make me laugh. So I want to teach you today how you can be the peacock, <laughs> how you can be the peacock on realestate.com.au even if you're just starting out. Because one of the questions that you shot through was, we're just starting out, you know, how do we compete with other businesses, you know, in our marketplace that have been around for a long time? Well, I can tell you this one firsthand. I've been doing training, coaching, consulting for 17 years, okay, 17 years. And you know what the easy thing to do is? You do as a startup, all the stuff that the agencies that have been in business for 17 years have started to no longer do because they've redirected their time, energy, resources, effort into other things. And do you know how I know that? Because I've been looking at you all online for the last couple of weeks. And I can see, you can see the energy and the passion and the, the action around every single little nuance that somebody can do when they're just starting out because they're trying to capture the eyes of the market through a window. And the beauty of realestate.com.au is that you've got the capacity to do that. And there are even things on this portal that you are able to action and get for free. Yay, when you're starting out, that's exactly what you need, right? So let's take a look at your footprint. There are three main places. The first one being the free one, right? So let's get really clear on that. Agency profile. Okay, Whew. I need to breathe for a minute because I've got to tell you, this was the most sobering moment for me in the last couple of weeks when I have been looking at agency profiles online. Some of them are fantastic. Some of them, I really question if you've ever even logged in and had a look. The agency profile, right? So it's actually, you've got agent profile on realestate.com.au and you've got agency profile. I wanna to talk today to the agency profile. So in essence, the agency profile is a window where all, you know, realestate.com.au is a powerhouse. They're spending an enormous amount of money getting consumers to look at, at you, look at their website, and therefore look through the window at you, okay, to help us buy, uh, sorry, to sell and rent properties, buy um, and rent properties, be that for vendor, landlord, tenant, and purchaser. So when we've got them there, right, what they've got is they've got a section where landlords and vendors, right, there's 966,000 people are coming into the site and they're having a look around and they're looking at the window of you. And this is in essence, oh, I'm gonna call it, it's like a little micro site, a little pages, multiple pages about you and your business. The beauty of it is, this is Leichhardt. I live in Leichhardt in Sydney, so I went to what I knew. And I, I put in the search engine, I'm looking for an agency in Leichhardt. Well, I've got to tell you this number, uh, the number one agency up here, it's not the number one agency in Leichhardt. I know that because I know that marketplace, but the average consumer might not. And what it is, is it's giving a fair ranking so that all of the different agencies that are in and around that area that have showcased as having properties there or being involved and located in that area are coming up. So now I can click on that and I can go through to pages about that agent's profile on realestate.com.au. I'm showing you a really well-designed version, okay? This is Biggin and Scott. Now, Biggin and Scott in Richmond in a Victorian agency, this is what their agency profile looks like on realestate.com.au. I though wanna show you why this one stands out and what you need to do to go in and fix yours up straight away. Okay, there are multiple points here. The first, you'll see the logo. Now, when I looked online at others, you know, their, their background image on here might have been yellow and their logo was their traditional blue. And those two things just look so ridiculous together. It was ugly, ugly, ugly. And when I see ugly, I see unprofessional, unkept, uncared for, you know, uninteresting to me as a consumer. So you wanna get your logo to marry up with that great big hero shot. The hero shot being reflective of your, of your area, of something of interest to your consumers to tell them that you know your space and your market. Here's a tip. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna be bordering on offensive. Please put your correct address. I know that sounds ridiculous, 
But people have got the wrong addresses in there. They're not taking advantage of that profile space. You know, it's just a couple of lines. You know, this is hugely valuable commercial um, spaces for you. You've got links in there back through to your social proof. Remember I talked about all those important uh, 10 elements there around a website? They still factor in here onto your agency profile. You've got call to actions there, calls and emails. And by the way, you then scroll down. It just doesn't stop here. You scroll down and then you've got the profiles of the agents, sales and property management that all work in your organization. Okay. You don't need to hopefully be a rocket scientist here. And again, I'm really conscious. I'm so passionate about this, but please photos of everyone. And when I click through, um, by the way, not multiple people, not multiple photos of the same person. I have seen that. And don't put the same person up there several times. Get really clean. As you can see, hugely important. And these are businesses that I know. I just hadn't looked them up on here before, but consumers are. Then you get your own profile page as an agent, property managers too. What does it tell me about you? You know, what's your hero image, your photo, your personal bio? When we look at that personal bio, what's the construct of it? And you know what, you can even have your own uh, profile video sitting there as well. Again, tell me about you. This is one of the most important windows you will get. So what's your homework after today? You must go on to the um, to your agency profile, right? This is the link. This is the buy-in back in to get into your agency profile so that you can go in and clean it up. Make that window shine, guys. It's it's there for you and it's available. By the way, this will also help with your SEO ranking, okay? Because this is about your business and all your website details in the back. So it'll help boost you on Google too. So must, must, must do. But wait, there's one quick thing more. When you're on there, there is also um, a help guide on how to create a, a great agency profile there as well. Okay, it's a PDF, you can download it and read through that and make sure that you're correlating all those things. It's a simple um, construction guide. Even if you're not uh, web fantastic, you'll be able to do these ones, administration in your office. All right, number two, because remember 966,000, 10 million. Let's get, make sure our rent banners are there. In each of your suburb locations, marketplaces, there are banner advertisings available. So there are various space. You've got the, obviously you've got the top of the tree there when I go on into a search function. Cause remember we said that landlords are searching as tenants online, right? They're looking at you at this space. So even if you only have one listing, if you had the banner, perception is reality. If I see banner, banner, right? So I've got top banner, I've got side banner, and hey, I register for a, uh, an alert as a tenant. I'm getting an e-alert banner as well. So now I've got three banners I'm seeing. I've got a property I'm seeing. Perception is reality. I think you're everywhere. This is around helping you showcase the peacock being bigger than what you are. And you can start to compete even if you're just a new player in the market in your space, right? All these windows are super, super clean, right? So before I go to showcase, I just want to take you back through that, right? So it's e-alerts, it's rent search, okay? And it's also the banners that run at the top in agency search. So you're getting hit absolutely everywhere with your marketing. There's a, a great way to, to make sure that you're being seen, even when you're not yet having a property to be seen. Now, you only need one property to do a property showcase. <laughs> and again, perception's reality, right? If 62% of consumers right, are not looking past the first page, we want to have the biggest bang that we can on page one. So have you ever thought that in starting up, you know, I know we talk a lot about, um, you know, landlord paid advertising, but maybe it's a good advertising angle for you to even take this property showcase to get yourself up on that first page. When it comes to property showcase, there are a whole range of things that you can do. But in essence, this property showcase is there on the right hand side of the search page. And it's an advert, a special advert, standalone out on its own there with one property. You can go online and you can book that property. Now I went on to, again, went to Leichhardt, right? What I know. And when I did this last week, this is what the booking looked like. 
right? Now, of course, people are booking one week in advance, but what I'm saying to you is your banner advertising or your alerts, if they're not available in your marketplace, there is another option for you to still stand out like the peacock. Just jump in, speak to your account manager in your area, contact your account manager and get them to sit down with you and help you work out what your peacock feathers can look like for your space. All right, hang on. I'd said there was three, but there's just going to be one more, okay? Because I cannot do a webinar with realestate.com.au without talking to this again, but more so for the actual imagery, is quality listings. Guys, I'm still going online and I'm still, and, and I'm, in, I'm in offices and they're talking about, you know, what does, uh, does somebody gonna pay for pro photos? Are they not gonna pay for pro photos? Remember, this is a window to you. It's not a window just for tenants to rent properties. It's the window for landlords to select the agency that's going to rent their property for them. So you might wanna be looking at how do you actually put your properties online for a landlord's vantage point. Again, in the agency centre, you'll be able to go in and have a look at what the best adverts are, right? We talk through those six points of what a great ad includes. But the primary things I want you to talk to you right now is to remind you, go and have a look at every single photo that you currently have on realestate.com.au, compare it to other agencies in your area and have a look at it to compare it to what would a, then, a landlord think if I'm standing in the landlord's shoes or sitting at the landlord's lounge and I'm looking at you, what's my research telling me about your organisation? You know, when we look at these and um, the presentation of these, you know, we're looking at premier listings. You know, who's at the top of the tree in your marketplace? Is it you? You know, we've got the other three angles, but then of course you've got available to you premier listing as well, which keeps you at that top of the page there on page one for your properties listed by premier. You'll also see on tablet devices, um, handheld um, smart devices, you, know, you start to really see your business come to life and come to the fore with the peacock feathers with people tapping at your windows. Guys, here's what I want you to do. Today, I've taken you through the four windows. We looked at search engines, we looked at social, we looked at your website, and we looked at realestate.com.au, the biggest window of them all. After today, it's time to go and do one thing, and that is go clean your windows. It's been awesome being with you today. I hope you've gained a whole heap of information around tweaking your online presence so that you can influence what's being seen through the worldwide window. If you do have any questions that you'd love answered as a follow-up to today, then please jump online, shoot me an email, become our friend, join realpluscommunity.com.au and we'd love to help you on this online presence journey. On behalf of realestate.com.au, Real Plus and myself, we wish you all the very best in getting those windows clean. Have an awesome day.